Billings, we are back for another edition of the Billings Beat. I'm Neil Byer, residential realtor at Aleffus Real Estate Group, and I'm touring Billings to connect the community by interviewing business owners and members of our community. There are so many fantastic people in Billings that bring value and add to the vibrancy of our city. And today I'm speaking with one of them, Lenny, who owns Ebon Coffee Collective with Evan, his wife, sorry. Jaxie. No, please. <laughs> Evan. Evan. Yes, Evan. Evan. Evan, forgive all the me. Time. No, it's no. normal. But now I know. Eben Coffee Collective with his wife, Jaxie. Eben Coffee Collective has been open since 2016, but recently relocated to this spot at 3024 Second Avenue North. Eben Coffee is a multi-roaster cafe offering a variety of coffees and amazing homemade food items. Lenny, very pleased to meet you. I would like to start off our conversation by getting to know a little bit more about your business. What made you decide to open yep. Eben Coffee Collective? My wife and I had been in coffee in Helena, where we're from, for quite a few years before we moved here. Um, I actually moved here and um, to start working at Off the Leaf mm. up on Grand when they were open, and I was there for five and a half years. And so it's kind of always been something that we've been involved in and either managing or working on. And so eventually it kind of came to the point where <clears throat> if you want to make all the decisions you want to make, mm. you're going to have to open your own I channel. hear you. You want to be in charge. <laughs> so if you want make to the decisions. Charge, you to do all the, all the paperwork. How did you get started? In coffee? Yeah. I think like a lot of people, it was just a job, just a side job to start. Um, and uh, I just never, I could never escape it. So I just kept getting farther and farther down the, down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. And yeah. where, how far are you down that rabbit hole now? Uh, well, I guess I've opened a coffee shop or two now. So <laughs> but it's, uh, it's pretty down, pretty down the rabbit hole. We have a bunch of different, uh, we use a bunch of different roasters through. So we always have Revel who's here in Billings. And then we, about every three or four months, we'll rotate through another national one. And then on espresso, we have a different espresso on pretty much every day or every couple of days. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of tasting and tweaking and buying really expensive, fun coffee. <laughs> and I have to say, this is probably the best cappuccino I've possibly had in my life. What espresso is this? This is a Papua New Guinea um, from Revel, who's here in town. OK. So daily, you have a different espresso? We go through a, a, like a five pound bag. And so if we go through that in a day or sometimes like a day and a half, to we'll just put on the next bag and just keep switching it out. And you try to keep it local always, at least well, national? So the, yeah, so yeah, the, there's, yeah, there's Rebel, who we always have on. Um, it's like alternating. But, and then uh, right now we have a roaster called Black and White, and they're out of North Carolina. So we'll have them on for about three months, and then that will, that position will switch out. And what is the term for that? There's a term for this time, a coffee well, house, yeah, right? Yeah, multi-roaster. Multi-roaster. Yeah, it's probably the most common one. And is this is this becoming, I mean, is this unique? Is it growing for, in popularity? Montana, it's pretty unique, yeah. There's there's some multi-roaster cafes in bigger cities, um, but you kind of forego the, the benefit of roasting your own, and so there's a there's a big price jump between. Uh, so most companies will end up just building out a roasting program. Okay. And then roasting their do own Do it coffee. in-house. Yeah, do it in-house, and that saves quite, you know, it's quite a bit of right. revenue retained. But I, don't know, I always, I never started the business because I was like a business person. <laughs> I started it because I really loved coffee and wanted to, like I said, wanted to do fun stuff with it. And so um, that's still what we're doing. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think this is part, probably news to someone, this concept. I mean, I've never heard of it before, but I can see a definite attraction to being able to come here and try a different try roast different from yeah. different parts of mm -hmm. the country. Do you ever go international yeah. as well? Or is it always within the, the so US? So for the roasters are all US, but then the coffees are all from all okay. over the world. Yeah, that's cool. Their roaster has it. So, yeah. and do you ever have like 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 the coffee tastings where they'll yeah. invite people over. Yeah, and they can yeah. The so that's been a little little tricky with this year, anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Trying not to spread too much, but um, yeah, we'll have uh, coffee cupping is what it's called, and so we we'll have like a bunch of a bunch of different countries and different roasters all lined up, and you can taste through them all and do a compare and contrast. And, and just tell it like when yep. you're wine tasting, yep. like I smell the raspberry, and mm -hmm. like everyone goes around, yep. and wow, how cool! I had no idea. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, and you stopped doing that, obviously, because of COVID. But yeah, do you intend yeah. to continue doing that once? Uh, that would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. How often are you doing that? Oh, we do one every, at least one every couple of months. Sometimes it'd be more frequent if we have a lot of new coffees coming in. Um, but and it's open to the public, or? Yeah, before, yeah. Right oh, now cool. it's just been staffs, but um, yeah, it'd be great to get be able to get back to 
having big tech coffee tastings. And yes, no joke. Uh, what makes Eben Coffee uh, unique from other coffee houses? We yeah. touched on it somewhat, but maybe you can elaborate a little more yeah, or talk. Um, maybe there's other things yeah, that make it different. Yeah, the main thing is just using a variety of coffees on espresso because most places will keep a very consistent, um, for consistency's sake, you know, so it's the same every time right. on espresso. Uh, usually it's like they'll come up with a blend that they like and then that's always what's on espresso. So that's probably the main difference. Um, and just we always have we always have fun trying to make up new specialty drinks. Like we found a, there's a ruby, like a red cocoa bean. Mm -hmm. And so like that's one of our specials right now is a mocha with a, it's like ruby cocoa in it. Um, all of mocha. Our mocha. Oh, mocha. Yeah. Um, and all of our stuff is like um, food dye free. So even like all of our bright colored stuff is all like plant based food colorings and trying to just keep really quality ingredients in all of our products. And Including your food, right? Yep, I mean, you have so, some outstanding yeah, bakery yeah. items. Can you talk a little more about um, that? So we have, you know, we have some cookies and we have a, like one vegan option, a couple of gluten free options on pastries. Um, and then we also do gluten-free waffles on, so we have the maple and butter waffles all through the week. And then on Saturdays, we have some like gourmet waffle. Um, we did, oh man, what's the, some of the recent ones was like, I think this week we have uh, like a cherry and espresso whipped cream mm -hmm. uh, waffle coming out. And so every Saturday there's just a different flavor for waffles. And so are, you have to be a bit creative yeah, every week. Yeah, every week is <laughs> kind of like, what can we That's throw That's probably a bit fun though. It I mean, funny. who's the mastermind behind the menu? Is it you? Uh, actually, it's, our, it's Alex now who works here. Um, it was it was Jaxie for the first few years and we've kind of handed that off to Alex and he's done a great job. So that, once so. a week, he, yeah, once he a, gets back there yeah, and come up with gets creative mm -hmm. and you get to try it and mm -hmm. give the thumbs up or thumbs yep. down. We did a... We did a, I just trust him. He just, <laughs> okay. we did a uh, bacon, mac and cheese waffle Oof. before. <laughs> a bunch of different, was it actually yeah. bacon and mac and yeah, cheese yeah. on the waffle? Uh -huh. How so fun is that? It was one sweet one and one savory one on Saturday. So. Let me throw that on Facebook yep. and social media. Yep. How could people not want to come yeah, in and try a mac and cheese bacon <laughs> yeah. waffle? Yep. Genius. Exactly. Uh, hello. <laughs> No, oh, you're fine. We're you want to say hello? <laughs> Give a quick wave. <laughs> um, what motivates you? What drives you? Oh, man, that's a good question. Probably just community, I think. Yeah. That was the main thing that kept me in coffee. Well, I love coffee, and it's, it's a really fun, it's a fun business to be in. It definitely attracts a, a group of people that's, I don't know, just like, just like nothing else. Yeah. Um, and community and the the coffee crowd of people has been what definitely motivates me to just stay in it and um yeah it's just a good way to good way to see people on it on the daily and to i don't know you just get a especially with customers that you see on like an everyday basis or right. like every week basis right. you like see them throughout years of their life like maybe get married or have kids or There's start their own business a or big social away. factor yeah. to owning a cafe yeah, right i definitely. mean you make friends acquaintances mm -hmm. you get familiar with the people who work in the the neighborhood yeah. and form relationships it's i remember when i saw the first like a uh, kid from like a freshman all the way through senior and then, then like graduate and i was like I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> and now there's been like all sorts of like tons of classes that I've gone through. And seen, but, um. So it's, it's, that's fun. I mean, yeah, and, and to be a part of that community. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It really keeps you tied into the community. And, um, and that's something that I, that I just love is that's, that's what's kept me in it for sure. Do you have a lot of regulars come through? Yeah. I mean, there's the people that are, you have like your dailies and then you have your weeklies and then your monthlies, you know, and then the people that are, we have like one lady from, like Las Vegas, and she's only in like twice a year, but she like always makes sure to show up. You know, the people she that just like, comes through Billings it, yeah, every now and then. in Billings, she like makes sure to show up, and so that's fun too to see that. What is something that your regulars and you know people may not know about you? Is there Ooh. anything you want to disclose? <laughs> um, what's a good? Uh, and some of our regulars might know this, but. Every September 19th, uh, my family and I celebrate International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, really? And 
get all dressed up. Oh, that's so and cool. Usually, I like, have a party. And <laughs> your family sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> they are. Yes. Let yeah. me hear. Let me hear how you talk like a pirate. <laughs> it's not. It's not the right day. I can't do it. <laughs> only but on the nineteenth. It only happens outfit. on the nineteenth. Yeah, gotta have the whole outfit and everything. Is that the only? I mean, do you have other unique celebrations you do with <laughs> your family? Probably, that's probably the the main one that we prioritize. That sounds like so yeah. much fun, though. Yeah. So you go the whole nine yards. The, yeah, the we get all have up. outfits, and we all you usually put have put like, your knee back mm -hmm. and put like a. We got lots of flags, and we got lots of uh, candles, and we get a good like pirate food spread out. Are there the are party. there duels and fights? <laughs> lots of swords. Oh, how much fun is that? <laughs> September nineteenth. September nineteenth yeah. in Helena. Oh, well, was, yeah, we did it in Helena, and we do it here now. So yeah. Is, is it is it open to the public or is it invite yeah, only? Yeah, no, no. It's oh, been, really? It's been it's been open to. Whoever wants to dress up. Wow. You're <laughs> on. Everyone knows now. now you might you have, have a know. huge pirate party great. on September 19th. <laughs> um, what are some of the highest highs you've had in life so far? Ooh, man. Highs of life. We're getting I mean, serious now, aren't we? Yeah, now we're yeah. Getting, yeah, getting, getting deep. Um, getting the store open was, was a pretty cool feeling. So like, I've never, never having done any like entrepreneurial type stuff before. I was like, oh, we actually did it. Like we thought about it and made it work. And, and it you're works. doing it yeah, and, and you're continuing it. to do it. Yes, that was great. Um, was there a lot of fear and trepidation at first? I mean, was it anxiety yeah, or are you yeah, more like, was, oh, stuff, we'll see what happens? Yeah, a lot of it was like figuring stuff out on the fly, you know, because just didn't know what to expect and not, and everything's not going to go right the first time. It's like being flexible enough to change stuff and then also just kind of like jumping in and be like, well, I guess we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Did it go um, smoother or were there more bumps in the road than you anticipated? I think just the things, that, the places I anticipated were actually easier and just the ones that had no clue were going right. to exist. Those were the Didn't even ones. see. Yeah, it. the it ones like, that you didn't even know were yeah. going to be. Lenny, it was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet Thank you. Thank you so much for talking more and introduce, introducing us to Eben. Yes, he nailed Eben. it. Um, and thank you for playing such a large part in the community. You know, I think that you uh, have the magic that is needed to be successful, and that is a passion for what you do and a love for what you do, and just taking care of people and Thanks. treating them like family. You know, I, I just met Lenny today, but I feel like I could spend the whole day sitting here chatting with you. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everyone, for another uh, joining us for another edition of the beat of billings i appreciate it uh join us next time while we'll, where we'll be talking to more uh business uh, owners uh community leaders uh, and just members of the community of billings that are doing good work in the city and contributing to uh, making billings a better place for all of us thank you so much cheers